Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So I know it's been a while since I've spoke to you like this. I feel like it's been ages since I've been away. I've not filmed any like fitness content or anything, but I'm excited for this video. I'm going to talk you through my ultimate like glutes and hamstrings workout that's been working for me for the past like basically over a year or so. I've been sticking to this exact glutes and hamstrings routine almost exact apart from things like unilaterals and isolations and stuff but more or less the same compounds every single glute day and it's got me some good results so i wanted to share it with you guys i also just wanted to share the importance of sticking to the same routine week in week out that is going to be the main reason as to why you make progress if you are switching and changing up your routines every single week you're never going to see progress because you need to be using progressive overload within the compound movements like hip thrusts rdls things like that you need to be progressively overloading within those each week and if you keep changing exercises each week your muscles are just going to be like what like it's just gonna be all over the place you need to stick to the same exercise every week I can't stress the importance of that so I'm gonna take you through my like basically my like holy grail glute workout that grew me a booty but you might also notice everything's looking a little bit different so whilst I was away my bedroom has been renovated I've been sorting it out ever since I've got back and I've been like living literally out of my suitcase since I've got back so I've been living out my suitcase for like nearly a month which is just don't talk to me about it because i've not been happy about it but the end result i'm very happy with so ignore the tripod on my bed please but right okay so this is where you walk in so this way walk in this is my door this is my little bedside table this is my bed my bed is pretty messy at the moment please ignore that and then these are the wardrobes and drawers and my dressing table. Um, so these drawers and this wardrobe were both from Ikea. Basically everything was from Ikea actually. This whole, I got this quite a while ago. But this dressing table apart from the mirror is from Ikea. Drawers are Ikea, mirrors Ikea, wardrobes Ikea. This bed is from a place called Deluxe Beds. Um, this lamp is from Ikea. All these like little ornaments from Ikea. The main event, the huge mirror that I also got from Ikea, which has been an absolute pain to get home, to be honest, because it's so big. You can't even really tell on camera, to be honest, but it's like two metres long. Um, and I had to basically go with my dad because he's got a seven-seater car, so we could just slot it right in. But in my little car, could not get this in. So it's been a bit of a pain, but we put this in yesterday and... I'm so happy with it. I think it just makes the space look so much bigger as well as this little mirror as well. So I also got this little shelf um, from Ikea to like, let me show you what I meant, to go, I'm sorry, this is meant to be like a gym video, I'm showing you my room. This was meant to go under here, like that, a little shelf. But basically that bit of wall there is like um, where the chimney breast is, so it's not exactly like straight and level. So if we were to put a shelf on, it would basically like be coming out of the wall because the wall's like too bent. So I can't put it there. I may put it over my bed up there with maybe some of these like little plants and candles on because I've kind of just clogged it all up over here because I was meant to put some of it on the shelf, but I can't. But yeah, that is the room situation. I love it. It's so much brighter. Like you can probably tell literally already by now that the room is just so much brighter it's been painted white i think before it was a little bit more um it was still kind of like white but it was a bit more like yellowy so now it's much brighter and then obviously i've got white bedding and stuff so it's just yeah new carpet just makes the room look so much nicer anyway enough home situation i'm gonna take you to the gym and take you through my ultimate booty workout. Okay guys, so let's get straight into it. Unfortunately, I forgot to film my warm up for YouTube, but if you wanna go see the warm up, then head to my Instagram and it's on there. It's just more like things that I do for every leg day, which you've already seen in previous YouTube videos, like leg swings and stuff, just to open up the hips and really just increase our flexibility and mobility. But the first exercise we're gonna be going into is barbell RDLs. Now, these are literally probably my number one, actually probably number two favorite exercise for growing the glutes. Um, so you wanna keep the barbell as close as possible to your legs. I was literally scraping the barbell up my shins so it's actually touching your legs. 
and you want to lean the body a little bit further forward this is how you're going to get a better glute connection and also not going past your range of motion is really important in not feeling this movement within your back I used to take my RDLs all the way down to the floor and bounce it on the floor and then I was wondering why I was getting back pain and that is why once you go past your glute range of motion you are obviously going to be engaging your back more than your glutes so you don't want to be doing that as you can see for me personally I was just going past my knees but it's different for everyone else depending on how tall you are and your levers and stuff but I also think that having my head facing further to the floor as well and not having it facing up to the ceiling also helps connect my glutes a lot more too. So then the second exercise we're going to be going into is barbell hip thrust. So this was kind of like a moderate weight for me. I think this was 160 kilograms um, and I was doing four sets of 10 reps here. So that was also what I was doing for the RDLs as well. Sorry, I forgot to mention. So I was doing four sets of 10 reps for both of these exercises. And with hip thrust, you want to just pretend like your glutes and your hips are acting like an ice cream scoop so when you're bringing the weight up as you can see there's not much movement within my head and my upper body it's all very sturdy and the most movement is literally within my hips and my glutes so yeah you want to be engaging the upper body as little as possible and just scooping in with your tailbone upwards and keeping the movement nice and slow and controlled now, I didn't really class these as pulsed reps, but I like holding it at the top just a little bit just to engage the glutes even more rather than just kind of throwing the weight up and then back down again. I do like to add a little bit of a hold into the top of the hip for us as always. I just always do this. I personally prefer it. I was absolutely dying after this set. I found this so difficult. I've still not got all my strength back after coming back from Bali as well. But the next exercise we're going to be going into is a leg press. Now, I wanted to keep this stance a little bit wider, but not so wide, if you know what I mean. It was not absolutely all the way at the end of the plate. It was just a little bit wider than I would if I was trying to target the quads. So we're gonna be taking this movement nice and slow as well. And also it's really important with the leg press that you also don't go past your range of motion on this exercise as well. I used to do this and I used to feel the leg press so much in my lower back and I was so confused as to why I was feeling this movement in my lower back. And more often than not, it is because you're going past your range of motion and you've started engaging your lower back, which is what you don't want to do. Obviously, the leg press is a movement which you can... It's easier to lift heavier on and you don't want to be putting that heavy load on your lower back. So please don't go all the way down to your chest. It just won't help you. Even if you have the mobility, it's just not really necessary. But... With this leg press, I wanted to take it nice and slow and controlled, as you can see, and make sure you don't lock your knees out, please. Make sure you don't lock your knees out. The amount of videos that I've seen where people's legs snap off, just don't do it. It's not worth the risk. So I did three sets of 12 reps, I think, here, and this was kind of like a moderate weight for me. Yet again, it wasn't very heavy, but it wasn't very light. I was just kind of going mid with the weights today. Okay, so then we're going to be going into another favourite of mine for the glutes, which I sometimes tend to forget about, but when I come back to it, I'll, I just want to keep doing it every single glute day. It's absolutely amazing. So it's dumbbell sumo squats. Now, for this, you can really grab a heavy dumbbell. So you could probably grab the heaviest dumbbell that you can, that you can find and actually pick up and just do as many reps as possible. So with this, I find that I get the best glute connection when I don't come all the way up. As you can see, I'm not coming all the way up with the weight and I'm kind of like keeping constant tension within the glutes and the hamstrings, obviously with a wider sumo stance. And as you can see, my muscles are actually contracting all the way up rather than down. And I'm not hyperextending the glutes whatsoever. You don't want to be doing this in any movements. You don't want to be hyperextending. I know you can probably see it sometimes a lot on Instagram where people kind of flex the glutes inwards and it's just so bad for your back. Please don't do that. You won't be feeling any glute connection within that either. It's just not beneficial whatsoever. So you want to be focusing more on contracting the glutes all the way down and all the way back up again so that you're keeping constant tension within those glutes. And then we're going to be going into some weighted hyperextension. So I like to use a plate for these, but you can use a dumbbell or whatever you feel most comfortable with. I sometimes just switch it up a little bit. 
um, just depending on how I'm feeling. But I was feeling these so much in my glutes and my hamstrings this session. I was really happy with it. Um, so as you can see, my back is kind of rounded a little bit when I get to the top. This just takes a lot of the pressure off your lower back and puts it more on your glutes instead. And as you can see, the plate is kind of giving me less space to bring the weight all the way down because if you, the further down you go with your body, the more you're going to feel it in your back. So you don't want to do that. You want to keep this range of motion quite short. I personally think that helps me get a better glute connection if I keep the range of motion quite short rather than going all the way down. And then we're going to be going into some barbell deficit reverse lunges. So what a deficit is, is when the foot that is on the floor is actually raised up so that you are kind of going down with the movement rather than just staying flat on a flat surface. So this, I think, personally helps get a better connection within my glutes. The fact that it's a deficit and I'm reaching further down with those glutes and hamstrings, I, finally, I find personally that it connects my glutes more than a regular lunge. Um, but it is kind of personal preference really, it's not absolutely necessary to add the deficit, it's just personal preference. But I did three sets of eight reps here and again you want to keep this movement quite slow and controlled and having your body folded a little bit further forward rather than straight up to the ceiling and having my head pointed down to the floor also really helps me get a better glute connection rather than a quad connection. And then I thought I'd include a little clip of me doing my cool down just because I don't think it's really shown enough on social media that you actually do need to be stretching after you've lifted weights. So a lot of people skip this, including me. This was the first time I've done it in a while because I actually had time to do it. I know it's so easy to skip it like if you don't have time and stuff, but please try and make some extra time to do some stretching after your workouts, especially once you've done like a heavy leg session or something. It just completely cools down and relaxes your body and removes some lactic acid from your muscles. So if you do have time, then try and fit it in your sessions. It also helps just increase your mobility and flexibility in general as well. So there's so many benefits to stretching after your workouts. Hey guys, so just my editing self here, don't mind me, um, but I just wanted to talk about, because I wanted this video to be like as informative as possible, um, but I just wanted to talk about basically like the way that I have structured this workout and why I have structured the workout the way that I did. Obviously there's only so much I can fit in the voiceover because the clips are only so long and I wanted to talk about the actual workout, but I just want to talk about as in like why I have structured it this way because I know that some I get quite a lot of questions saying like why do you do this at the start and this at the end and whatnot so I have talked about it in another YouTube video but it was quite a while ago so I just want to bring it up again because it's very important and I want you all to be taking this information with you into your leg workouts and just your all of your workouts in general it applies to all muscle groups but basically the way that you want to be structuring your, let's just talk about leg workouts specifically, 
specifically as that's what this video is about. The way that you want to be structuring your leg workouts is you want to start off with compounds. So a compound movement is a movement that works more than one muscle at a time. So for example, you've got your squats, you've got your RDLs, you've got your hip thrusts. They're all examples of compound movements because they work more than one muscle at once. So the reason that you want to be doing these at the start is because they require more energy, like you exert more energy when doing these movements. So you want to keep them at the start when you have the most energy rather than at the end. And these compound movements are what you want to be focusing on progressively overloading in, preferably. You're not really going to be progressively overloading in some cable kickbacks. It's not really... They're not really on the same level of importance. You want to hit PBs with your squats, your hip thrusts, your RDLs, your deadlifts. And those are the compound lifts. So you want to keep those at the start as obviously you're not really going to... You're unlikely to hit PBs and stuff if you leave those at the end when you're tired, you know, you're fatigued and you're not going to perform them as well. And these are also the exercises that you really want to be cracking down on form with as well and really, really focusing on form with these videos and perfecting your form because if you don't have good form you're not going to benefit from them whatsoever so if you feel like you haven't got the right form yet then please just lower the weight lower your ego and focus on your form for the next like few weeks or months or however long it takes until you get the perfect form so that is why you want to keep them all at the start just because of the sheer importance of them and um, you can do your own research on like compound movements and stuff but i just want to emphasize on here how important compound movements are for muscle growth they are the fundamental part of your muscle growth rather than isolations and stuff so yeah you want to be keeping those at the start if you didn't already know that then please make sure you do those at the start and then what you want to be going into next is your unilateral movements so that is going to be things like lunges um bulgarian split squats it's just mostly all single leg things so the only reason i did lunges last in this workout is because what I wanted to go on was not free in the gym so I had to just swap around my isolation and my unilateral but I usually go straight into my unilaterals from my compounds um so these single leg movements are also so important they help decrease imbalances within your body and they really just emphasize on that one muscle at a time obviously you're doing single leg you're putting more focus on one side of your body at once and these still require quite a lot of energy these movements are still very difficult i mean if you've never done bulgarians before then where have you been they're harder than compounds i think so yeah, you want to be keeping those after what after your compounds. Obviously, I've named some examples. If you're stuck for your leg days, you can pick between those. Obviously, I did deficit reverse lunges today, but a lot of the time I can do normal lunges or I do like Bulgarians, as I said. So yeah, and then lastly, you want to be focusing on isolations. Now, I feel like social media tries to say that isolations do absolutely nothing they're useless and you don't need them in your routine when that is completely incorrect you do still want to be focusing on isolations and keeping them within your workouts they're still so important at actually isolating one muscle at a time um, which is the kind of these are the kind of movements that you can focus more on volume they're actually really good for hypertrophy so things like kickbacks like i was doing the hyper extensions uh, leg curl leg extensions they just really put so much focus and pressure on one muscle at a time um, and just that one muscle on its own but obviously they do not require as much energy as a compound movement say where you're using your full body um they just don't exert as much energy obviously they're still hard as fuck but generally speaking scientifically wise they don't exert as much energy which is why you should keep those at the end and they are just a really good way at the end to just tire your muscles to the absolute max and just absolutely break them before you go home which is what we want in it so yeah i just wanted to talk about that in case you were confused and if you didn't even know what each of those was because i know they're spoken about quite widely on social media and if you didn't know what each one was then hopefully i've explained it in a good way with some examples but if you do have any further questions then please comment them down below and i'll try and answer you as much as possible in the best way that i can anyway on with the video okay guys so that was it for today's youtube video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you found it helpful um i didn't include a warm-up for this just because i forgot to film it on my camera i'm sorry about that but it will be up on my Instagram, which will be in the description if you want to see the warm-up that I did. I only managed to film the cool-down for the YouTube, but the warm-up will be on Instagram. So yeah, if you want to watch that, head over to my Instagram. I hope you did find this helpful. If you want to shop, 
any of my fits, my Honor Active teammate link is in the description. And I would appreciate it so much if you did shop through it when you want to get some bits. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in my next video.